Thank you for meeting me, uh, Linda Hanson and Lady Omega Hamming. Brilliant. So, um, that's great. I understand uh, you both run STEM Bees, right? Yes. Right, brilliant. Um, can you tell me about STEM Bees initiative and how it all began? So, STEM Bees is a non profit organization, and our main focus is to bridge the gender gap in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, the reason we started STEM Bees basically was because I have a background in natural science and my co-founder Angela, who is not here today, has a background in civil engineering. Um, in our individual classes, we realized that the ratio of boys to girls was terrible. Yes, unacceptable. Exactly. <laughs> and we found ourselves at Meltos Entrepreneurial School of Technology after uni and we realized that the ratio here was no really better. So we decided to do something about it. Okay. I mean, rather than complain, why don't we do something? So the whole initiative is about reaching out to young girls and empowering them okay. to venture into STEM related yeah. fields. And that's what STEM is about. Okay. okay, so spawn out your own personal experience exactly. and desire to um, balance exactly. our patients. That's very nice. So, um, in the activities that you, or how do you actually plan on achieving this racial balance? Um, as I said, we empower and train young girls. So we go to basic schools and in the future high schools and then we pick girls who are interested in these girls because there has to be that interest. Right? Yeah, yeah. So we pick these girls and then we train them. We, go, we have workshops, we mm -hmm. try to have camps and then we walk them through the whole STEM thing. We try to introduce them to women who are already um, doing all of these skills because sometimes yeah. you just need to know that somebody can, somebody's doing it and so you can do it as well. Yeah, that someone has laid the exactly, foundations like Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Because we find out that in these fields we have the men, the Darwins and the everything STEM is men. <laughs> all the people we know who are doing great in science and technology and all of that are men. So yeah. it makes it difficult for a girl to think, hey, I can do this. But then if you introduce a girl to a woman, who is also doing this and excelling at it. It's sometimes all that girl needs to it makes know. it easy for them to identify exactly. and realize they can exactly. be there as well. Okay, exactly. that's great. Um, so, how many schools would you say you managed to be to so far? Um, so, we work with College of Basic Girls School. That's, the, that's our school, I would say, because so that's the school we launched with, and okay. with every other event we've had, we've had it with them. It's a public school found in Kaligono and we work with Jack and Joe and also YWCA, okay. Young Women's Christian Association. Okay, so three schools for a start. Yeah. That's good. Was there any reason you picked these three schools? Like, was it your alma mater? Is that one of you went to school? So. Um, not really. No. <laughs> no. So, um, when we started off, I mean, we just launched last year, June. Um, you know, it's very difficult for a school to give permission to an organization yeah. they don't know. So we had a lot of pushback. And I'm happy to say Kolegono was the first school to actually accept us and okay. want to try us out. So that's why I say they are our school, because okay. they gave us a chance when no one would. <laughs> and um, Jack and Joe, we just worked with them this generally during our five-day camp. As well as Ride of UCA, we had an hour of code with them, and she is part of Ride of UCA, so she is. Okay, so that made it easy. Yes, so yes. it's great that you are expanding into a lot of schools. Um, and then, how are you getting there? Who are you partnering with to help your efforts pretty much? Okay, so as I said, we'll be entering high school soon. We want to get some high school girls involved as well. And the pushback we got in the beginning, we believe we'll get it as well. So instead of just going in, face Forward, we are actually partnering with organizations who are already in these schools. Yeah. So one of the organizations, um, I believe AFS, is very, very strong in most of the high schools in Ghana, especially okay. the all-girls schools okay. in Ghana. So um, we are in talks of having some kind of partnership. Um, they are more into exchange programs and entertainment, and they're looking to add some kind of education to their programs. Yes. So with STEM, these partnering with them, we would, have, we would add the STEM education whatever they're doing. So as the cultural Exactly. Academy. So it wouldn't be yes. just entertainment, but it would have some education aspects as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to ask this, uh, not only because I'm a guy, but uh, you are very focused on 
women, which is great because you want to balance out the ratio, but uh, fast forward five years time where you are a good force within the country, really pushing the agenda, don't you think you need to consider um, those with X, Y chromosomes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love, we love you guys. Um, definitely. Um, yes, as she said, we are focused on women because we want to bridge that gap. Yeah. But definitely, there is a serious problem in terms of STEM education in the Ghanaian curriculum. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we are not just looking at teaching girls, but trying to bring the STEM education in the entire Ghanaian curriculum. So in the future. Yes, five years down the line, we are looking to work with the educational system in Ghana so that we can add some STEM um, curriculum to the education system. Okay, okay. So it's not going to be all technology focused, though. You're actually looking to add a bit more science. Yeah. So, um, okay. no, go on. so our focus is on science, technology, engineering, and math. Yeah. So as much as possible, the workshops and the programs we have are focused on these four areas just to create awareness that they can they have other opportunities in these fields as well. Okay, okay. How do you get volunteers to these workshops? Because I don't assume you're able to go out of teaching by yourself. No. So how we get volunteers to the to STEM these is more of just on social media. We have okay. our website and also because we went to melt what and technology technology, we pick on the brains there as well. So we are very focused on people who have some form of STEM background and are open and passionate about teaching other people or sharing the knowledge that they have. Okay, and you talk about your website. I visited it and I actually like your website. It's very fancy with the bees and <laughs> all your different uniforms. Um, who actually designed uh, your website for you? Um, that's the co-founder, Angela. She worked on the website. Yes. Okay, nice. V very well done. Um, to one to one, you can tell they can <laughs> That's great. Um, okay, but then uh, back to the volunteers. And like I said, is there uh, some other medium by which um, maybe if I'm a science teacher and I'm passionate about what you do, I can actually get involved? Yes. It, we are very open to even teachers who are in the STEM field because we feel they are already in the teaching sector and it will be easier for them to impact the knowledge. We have another direction in which we we teach the kids. Okay. So we are very open to teachers especially who would like to offer their yeah, services. Yes. yes. And if you want to join us, the simple as sending us an email to team at Stanley's Um we just send us an email showing your interest and also add something little about yourself, let us show your background and we'll see where we can push you. And if you don't have a STEM background, you're also very much connected, um, you can come in as a volunteer. But if you really want to be a mentor as we call ourselves um, we can train, you can be part of our projects, and through that we'll be, you'll be trained so that you can be a mentor to mentor kids. Yeah, that's great, that's great. So um, before I start talking about you know, going to the schools, you are covering for some of areas, uh, you are just about a year old, I yes. think. Um, so you're doing quite a lot, uh, and it costs money. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we all know uh, when it comes to funding STEM-related activities in Ghana, it's not yeah, so, so how, how do you find it? Um, so, in the beginning, we had to use family and friends. So, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the family and friends back. Uh, okay. Yes, fortunately for us, our family and friends are very supportive. So, our very first event was sponsored by family and friends. Um, subsequently, our other events were, our of course, was sponsored by a business man. Just told them about what we were doing, what the aim was, and how it was all going to happen. And it's like, how much do you need? So he just wrote us a check, and that happened. Oh, that's but beautiful. we've also received grants from businesses, organizations such as WeTech and Bolivar. Okay. Okay. So WeTech is Women Enhancing Technology. That's an organization that focuses on women enhancing technology. Like the name suggests. So, <laughs> We applied and they gave us a grant which we used for our five day camp. Um, also, Vodafone has given us a grant for an event we'll be having soon to teach girls from the SOS Children's Village how to code. So, we are planning a two hour coding session, okay. a half or two hour coding session with kids from the SOS Children's Village. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, do you have a date for that yet, or are you still mm -hmm. waiting? Um, we're still waiting on the fine details because we need to get everything sorted before. Yeah. Well, that'll be that'll be great to know how that goes. Yes, we will let you know. <laughs> so, in, in line with that, um, what other future plans do you have going forward? Um, so we are looking to. We've been doing one of one of projects that is um, Hour of Code, Cam, and all of that. But we're looking to plan a longer, a project that takes a longer period. Because if you reach out to a girl, you, she has the interest, she's so excited, and then you leave her, she loses all of that. And then what was the point? So we are trying to organize or come up with projects that are maybe one year long. We take a number of girls, we train them for that period. They become STEM ambassadors, they go out and then get themselves, let me put it that way. So that's what we're working towards right now, to get, I mean, as you said, money, get the grants and yes. get the funding to do these kind of things. Okay, that's, that's great. That's great. I believe um, I've been looking to work with other organizations that already have like code schools going or code academies already established. Yeah, we actually were in talks with elites and um, yeah, it was a good partnership. We're hoping to have a really good partnership and hopefully other other organizations can come Oh, that's, that's great to hear. Um, so it's a big job and we can't do it alone. It definitely is. And I can see you are both very passionate about <laughs> what you And you enjoy it, which is always a plus. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to try to find out if there was one thing you could change about the state of science policy in the country or one initiative you could just make happen immediately to just promote them in the country? What do you suppose that would be? Um, so what I would say is, currently the curriculum of the education system doesn't really have STEM in it. Yes, we do the general science and we do some kind of computer science where you go to say, this is the keyboard, this is the monitor. <laughs> oh, wow. and, I mean, a kid leaves high school and hasn't seen a line of code before. That is terrible. Because in the world we live in now, everything is technology, from your cell phone to even your television. So it's very good for the kid to understand what is behind that. We have kids who go on Facebook and all they do is poke friends and look up pictures. But there's so much more you can do with Facebook. You can run an entire business on Facebook. You can run Instagram, people just say, Selfies and share. People are running businesses on Instagram. So that is it. If we could go past the fun parts of social media and teach kids how to maximize whatever they can do in terms of business education with whatever um, technology is available yeah. today, it would really go a long way to change everything. You. Yeah, just to add to what she said, I think another thing that we would, I would love to change would be the training or the mindset of the kids. Mm -hmm. um, you teach them for a very long time and they think they cannot do anything on their own unless their teacher is there. But if it's practical enough, if they are allowed to do things with their hands or with their brains, it will be more, it will be more impactful. Will be more of not just chewing and pouring, yes. but be more of I'm learning this and adding it to whatever knowledge I have to make a difference. So I think it shouldn't just it shouldn't just be a curriculum where they're teaching every day, go to the class and you're copying notes. But actually, you're having experiments that you're doing. You're coming up with ideas to solve problems around you. Okay. So um, as we are going to the end of uh, this interview, I uh, just want to know for the young girls out there who you haven't managed to have direct contact with yet, or those that have been thinking about soon um, their studies and things, what would you have to say to them? All I would say is they should, they should do it. Yes, it will be difficult, it's not easy. I don't think any subject is. Um, they should just go, go out there and do it. Um, there are so many opportunities, countless opportunities. And some of the highest paid jobs are in STEM. So they should do it. There's sure. so many rewards that come with it. And if they need help, they should reach out. There are so many people out there who are willing and ready to help. So it's hard work, but do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the, uh, just to talk off to what she said, I'll say the first thing you have to always keep behind is to believe in yourself. When you believe in yourself, other people will believe in the vision you believe in. 
So once you have that covered, you know that you can go wherever you want to go to. So it's hard work, but believe in yourself, yes. and you can do it. Yes. Okay, I think that's a very good note. Okay. But we are not going to end on that note. Okay. No, no. We're going to end on a note where um, I've been told by a very trusted source, a number of things, okay. um, that if you were to eat one, mm -hmm. yes, it's preferable in the leaves that it's actually much better in the leaves. Now, professional opinions. <laughs> Personally, I agree. Personally. It gives it a special flavor. Ah. The flavor it comes with, the pack and the one not. Yes, that's just true. Feel, you know, wancha is a local dish, so you have to eat it the local way. I don't like it when people use the packs and the forks and the spoons. Nah. Leaves your hand, that natural fork that God gave you, and just kill it. Wow. <laughs> You just kill it. Yeah, that's yeah. what you want. Well, for me, I also very much agree with him. I feel watching in the least gives it that branding that watching it. Oh, yes, right. it adds flavor to the food and it's also helpful for our environment. Right, so, when your yes. national exactly. partners you're trying to get come down, you take them to a local spot. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's great. You have a spot right there, so yeah. <laughs> you take them and eat with our hands. Yeah. Great, I hope you take me there after this then. Please. Sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much great. for your time. Uh, Linda, Lady Bonica, yes. brilliant. Thank uh, you. Yeah, hope we meet again.